to you here, and in this video tutorial, we'll be reviewing how to round trip a project from client to delivery. I've covered this topic to a limited extent in previous tutorials, but in this tutorial, I want to focus entirely on the process of round tripping. So let's say for a moment that you're just getting started in DaVinci Resolve or you just caught your first break and a client wants to hire you to color grade their project. How then should you get the project from the client, color grade it, and then send it back to them for delivery? What I suggest doing is to try to get the project from the client as a library if it's from Final Cut 10, or in media or project managed form if it's from Adobe Premiere or Final Cut 7. This simply means that only the assets that were used in the final edit are delivered to you along with the project file of the final edit. The advantage of doing it this way, as opposed to just having the client send an XML, is that we can make any necessary changes to the project before sending it off to Resolve. This will potentially eliminate a lot of conforming errors in Resolve by creating the XML ourselves. So this is what you'll have your client do. In Final Cut Pro 10, You'll have them click on the event with the project file, go to file, down to copy event to library, and then new library. We'll specify a location, in this case an external drive, give it a name, and click save. At the prompt, we'll make sure that the optimized media and proxy media checkboxes are checked. Then click OK. We can verify the newly saved project and media by locating the new library on the external drive, right click on it and choose Show Package Contents. As you can see, all of our media is here. And it's this library file that we want our client to send to us via FTP or on a hard drive. In Final Cut 7, we'll find the media manager under File, and then Media Manager. With the Media Manager open, we can pick a destination for the assets. Again, we'll choose the external drive, create a folder for the project, and then click Choose. Now I'll click OK, give the project a name, and then click Save. Coming over to the external drive, You'll see the project file and a folder called Media which contains the assets. This is what we'd have the client send to us. For Premiere users, this same process is called Project Management and we'll find it under File and then Project Manager. Now, the reason I explain all this to you is so that you can become familiar with the process of sharing a project. That way, you can explain to the client what you're looking for in order to grade their project. Okay, so let's now take a look at moving the project into Resolve. The easiest and best way to do this is with an XML, and because we have the project file to work with, we can make any necessary changes that will make the conforming process easier. It's a good idea to start by exporting a self-contained version of the video that way, we have a reference that we can use during the conforming. Next, it's good to create a duplicate of our sequence. That way, we can reference the original in case we screw something up or need it as a resource in finishing the project. And finally, it's good to go through the edit and to look for things that may not translate well in Resolve. This could be things like clips with variable speed changes, or anything else that may cause conflicts when we import into Resolve. Once the timeline is cleaned up, then we're ready to send it off to Resolve.